Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah and today is day two of the 2018 Inktober Drawing Challenge. The word prompt for today is tranquil, so I've chosen to paint a swan on a calm lake. So I've got a couple of aims for today and that is to start with blend two colours seamlessly together using the wet and wet technique and kind of on a larger scale than I did in yesterday's piece and I also want to try and limit my colour palette to just using three coloured inks. But to start with for this painting I went in first with my Pigma Micron fine liner in black which is waterproof and put in the main black area of the swan. So the three colours that I'm using are blue, violet and orange and I thought it would be really fun to kind of limit my colour palette just to see what sort of um, shades and different colours and tones I could get just using those three colours. And I also thought it would help towards producing a tranquil looking end piece. So I'm using the wet in wet technique which I did use yesterday but I'm using it on a larger scale. So I was a little bit conscious of the fact that I needed to work fairly quickly and so I added quite a lot of water to the background to start off with. And that was just to kind of buy me some time because as I said yesterday, the inks do dry quite quickly and I didn't want any lines between the two colours. I wanted that to be a really nice smooth gradient with no lines in between. And I did kind of achieve this but as you can see the paper is starting to buckle so that's probably something that I need to be careful of is not adding too much water because otherwise you can get sort of pooling and that kind of thing which then doesn't give you that nice smooth gradient. So that's something definitely that I'll take in for the future videos but I was quite pleased with how the colours laid down and I was quite conscious as well after doing yesterday's video that I added a little bit more colour, perhaps diluting it less because I knew and remembered from yesterday that the colours do tend to dry lighter. So I kind of worked on the reflection after I'd done the initial background but one of the things that I was conscious that I wanted to do today from yesterday's piece was to be a bit more patient in allowing those first layers to dry so that when I put down anything next to that first layer I didn't then get any bleeding of the colours and as you can see that's something I still need to work on because when I put down some of the inks on the reflection as you'll see here it did kind of push that ink out and kind of mess up my nice smooth gradient somewhat but I did manage to still go in and kind of smooth it out and as you can see as we go through the piece um, I did manage to kind of even out the reflection colours as well. So back onto the swan, the main swan itself then and I was really pleased by um, the way that you can use the two kind of almost contrasting colours or um, opposite colours on the colour wheel to, to kind of get a grey colour for that swan's neck and some of the shadow areas on the main body of the swan as you'll see I'm putting in here. Because they're complementary colours on the colour wheel they kind of neutralise each other out but they still kind of make the piece look cohesive and I'm not just going in with grey or something like that so it was really good to explore how the three colours that I um, picked out for today's piece kind of could work together, could mix together and generally make your piece look well kind of tranquil I guess but it was really nice to kind of experiment with those and I was pleased with how that turned out. So on the reflection and I was able to as I said just kind of patch up the bit where it had bled a little bit so that it wasn't as noticeable and it was kind of coming together okay and I was really enjoying this piece, it wasn't too complicated, I quite liked the simplicity and it was quite effective I think. There were things that I would possibly do differently tomorrow or for future pieces but that's what it's all about, all about trying different techniques and learning from your mistakes. Now one of the things I didn't like about what I did this time round though was the reflection itself. I think where I tried to add quite a lot of water and get that really nice smooth background in the first place I was kind of rushing and I used quite a large paintbrush to cover that background to start with 
but in doing so I think I lost a little bit of the control when I was adding the colour because I wasn't then getting nice smooth curves and lines of colour around like the neck area of the swan. I wanted that to be a lot more smooth and crisp and I think it came out a bit jagged. So I think that's something else that I need to kind of learn from today is perhaps kind of just slow down a bit, be a bit more patient and I think it's with practice as well and confidence and knowing how you know your, your mix of water and ink kind of work together in timing and that kind of thing. So although it doesn't look too bad, I think it could have looked better with smoother lines around the neck area in particular. So after I'd done my initial shadows on the swan, I did start to add some darker colours in just to add that contrast and I was also careful to leave some of the white of the paper as well because um, the white inks that I've got are pretty rubbish actually and there's nothing that quite beats the white of the paper so that was really important to me. Um, one of the things that I really disliked that I did this time, you'll see me doing now, is going in with that same black fine liner to do the beak on the reflection of this one. Now, I really think that I should have gone in with a lighter shade, either a dark blue or perhaps even a darker sort of grey for the reflection because I think this is just too black and it kind of annoyed me that I'd done that but as I said it's all a bit of a learning procedure and you know it's what you can take on for next time that's important. So I think you could even probably kind of fix this if I wanted to. I could go in with perhaps an opaque white or something like that, maybe not the ink even, but then just perhaps apply maybe a darker blue or something like that on top, just to kind of mute that reflection colour down and make it less kind of obvious. So I think it kind of stands out, it's too black. But nonetheless, I was pleased with the rest of the piece and it's something that I could fix if I wanted to go back in and do later. It was also really nice to add some of those sort of glow um, colours onto the reflection and I did try and add some white as well just to a few of the tips of the feathers. But this was the piece done for today. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And maybe if you've done anything like this for Whitney Tabor, then do let me know in the comments box. Let me know what you think of this. And don't forget, if you like this video, to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you all tomorrow.